Greetings. This is Amy Wentley with Chai Knuckles Knitting, and this is episode 2018-13, the Galloway Cardigan Reinforcing Steak Stitches. I'm teaching a class on the Galloway Cardigan at the Hillsborough Yarn Shop in Hillsborough, North Carolina. Galloway Cardigan is a pattern by Jared Flood. And in, as part of my class, I ask my students to knit a steak swatch that they can practice reinforcing steak stitches and then cutting their steaks before they have to work on the real sweater. In a previous blog post, there are instructions there for knitting this steak swatch, and here's what it looks like. It's a tube. It has some stranded color work, and then it has steak stitches. This particular steak swatch has nine steak stitches. For our Galloway pattern, you'll only have five. One, two, three, four, five in the middle. We're going to be working the steak and cutting up this middle column of stitches, and we're going to be working on the reinforcements on each side of that. This is a chart of what the steak stitches look like, and I have the stitches numbered here, the columns numbered here, one through six. The yellow in this chart coordinates with the blue in this swatch and the white to the yellow, and so the stitches are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, across. And we're going to be primarily, as I said, working on stitches on the columns four, five, and six here. So these are the instructions, and you're going to, going to want to use 100% non-superwash yarn to do your, um, your steak swatch. And you're going to want to use a crochet hook one or two sizes smaller than the needle that you used for knitting. The needle I used for knitting was a size 6 needle. And if you have a knitting gauge like this, this one lists the U.S. size needles at the bottom. And a U.S. 6 is the same as a size G crochet hook. So I'm using a size F crochet hook to reinforce my stitches. You start out by taking your reinforcement yarn, which you want to be contrasting from your pattern yarn. You want to be able to see it very clearly because you don't want to cut this, these reinforcements when you cut your steaks. So you want to make sure you can see this very well. So I'm using this very light white color for my steak stitches. So you make a slip knot with the reinforcing yarn and put it on your hook, and then you push the hook through the bound off edge at the top of the swatch, right through the center of stitch four. So on this swatch here, this is one, two, three, four. So I'm going to stick my crochet hook into the bind off at the top, and then I pull a loop through the bind off. So I wrap around my crochet hook and I pull a loop through my bind off and I now have two loops on my needle. I'm going to wrap a loop around my crochet hook one more time and pull it through both of these stitches. And now I have my steaking reinforcement yarn bound to that edge. And then I'm going to start working steps A, B, and C here and these are going to be done over and over again all the way down the swatch. What I do is I work from the bound off edge and I'm going to start on um, the left leg of column four. So it's this blue column here. I'm going to work the left leg of that column and into the right leg of column five. So I'm using half of a stitch from column four and half of a stitch from my middle column. I'm going to wrap the yarn around and pull it through both of those stitches. As you can see there, both stitches that came through, and I have two stitches on my needle now, I want to wrap and pull through both of those stitches. And that takes me through steps A, B, and C. And I'm going to continue doing this all the way down to every stitch. Half of a blue stitch, half of a yellow stitch. And then wrap through both. Insert my hook through half of a blue stitch, half of a yellow stitch. Wrap pull through both, and then wrap and pull through the loops on my needle. I'm going to go through half of a blue stitch, half of a yellow stitch, wrap, 
pull through those stitches, wrap, and pull through both of the reinforcement loops. So I will keep doing this all the way down. You can watch me at work. I'm going to move my yarn over here because it makes it a little easier to deal with. Okay. One thing you want to make sure of on this, and I'll make note of this again a little later, is you want to make sure you don't work any of these stitches twice through the same loop. What will happen is that'll cause your, once you cut it, it will cause your sticking reinforcement to start to unravel. So don't think the more the better. It should be one stitch through every pair of halves there, all the way down. Now notice what's happening. I've got this crochet going on here and it's pulling the stitches apart in that middle column. And that's what's going to help make it easier for us to cut later. And I will keep going. All the way down. And this is a, you know, pretty significant piece of work when you're actually working on the sweater. And on this Galloway cardigan, it's the whole front that you're doing this on. A second reason why you don't want to do um, a reinforcement twice in one set of stitches is that you'll set up a ruffle. Your, um, your reinforcement stitches will actually start to look like a ruffle. And uh, that's not good either because that adds bulk under your sweater. So, because these stitches are staying here, they are not coming out. Look good. That looks good. Okay, we're almost there. Probably have about, I think I'm probably about halfway through at this point. And you can start to hold it a little sideways if it's easier for you to see the stitches that way. That's an okay thing to do. You want your reinforcement yarn to have a lot of wool in it. Um, if you're working at a lighter gauge, you could use like a fingering sock yarn that actually has some nylon in it, which is nice, but you want it to be primarily wool because wool sticks together and wool won't unravel and you really don't want any of this business to be unraveling. Getting close to the end now. Half of one column, half of another column, all the way down. And I'm going a little quickly here because I'm doing this on the video and I know that your time is precious, so I don't want to take too much of that. But um, when you're doing it for yourself, please, you know, take your time, breathe a lot, make sure you don't miss any stitches because this is a big project and means a lot to you and you want it to turn out right. Okay, so when you get to the bottom, what you want to do is you want to put your um, crochet hook through the column four again, but this time the cast on edge, and you want to pull a loop through, and then pull it again, and then um, that's great. So you want to cut this yarn now. I'm going to tail, pull it through, and you're good. So that's one side. So see what's happening here is this gold column is starting to get pulled apart. 
So it, this was how we were originally oriented. So it's pulling over to the right here. Okay. And by pulling that way, it's not only securing these stitches from raveling and knitting doesn't usually ravel to the right. It's up and down, but it'll keep it from raveling that way. And then, um, it's also pulling things apart so that you can cut it easy, easier. So you finish this. This is the first column of stitches done. And then you have to turn the whole business 180 degrees. You're going to do it over again. This is now going to be stitches five and six, but you know, for all intents and purposes, this is symmetrical. You're doing the same things over again. So we're going to put a slip knot on our crochet hook. We're going to put it through the stitch and this is the cast on edge at this point. Um, this is column six and you're going to put it through all the way. You're going to wrap your yarn around and pull it through until you have two loops on the crochet hook. And you're going to pull one more loop through again. And this is securing the sticking reinforcement thread to the cast on edge now. And then you're going to go down and do a half a stitch from each column again, a blue and a yellow. And you're going to do this all the way down again. Um, and when you get to the end of the column, you're going to secure it in exactly the same way as before. Uh, if you want to speed ahead in the video and not watch this whole part, feel free to do that. Or you can watch me go down this column of stitches and grab all these. Um, it's kind of interesting to see because you can see how the reinforcements are pulling the yarn apart there. That's pretty cool. And that's going to set us up for doing a really nice job with um, cutting the steak. Oops. I think I split a stitch there. So I'm just going to pull this out for a little bit. Okay. And try this again. There we go. Sometimes your yarn will be splitty. It happens. Okay. And keep going. There we go. Every time I, it seems like every time I sit down to shoot a video for the blog, I can hear a train going by in the background. I don't know whether you can hear it or not, but I guess our, I usually shoot these around the same time of day, so I guess our trains are on pretty good schedule then. About halfway through now. Now on the Galloway cardigan, your sticking stitches are done a little bit differently. They're done in a checkerboard pattern. Um, that's just really to help you find the stitches. Um, some people do their sticking stitches in, in columns, like this swatch. Some designers do their sticking stitches in a checkerboard. Um, it's just really to help you see that those seeking stitch, sticking stitches are separate and um, just to visually help you with this. Um, that being said, too, when you're doing this, it's really helpful to have good light, especially when you get to the part where you're going to do the cutting. And as I said before, I'm going to do that in a separate video because I really I want to take this swatch to my class next weekend and uh, 
do the sticking reinforcement and I'm actually going to want to cut one set of these with them to show them how it's done and then I'll come back and I'll cut the other set on video for you. And we're almost at the end. Two more stitches, that's one and two. And when you get to the end, you stick your crochet hook through the cast on of column six and pull it through, cut and pull through. So what this looks like now is the middle of your stitches are pulled very dramatically pulled apart there. You can see through them. See the holes through there? That's crazy. And just to give you a feeling of what's going to happen, I'm not going to do it. I'm saving it for the next video. But you are going to stick your scissors in here and you are going to cut up that column of stitches all the way up and it's going to open it up. These reinforcements are going to stay here and they're going to help the fabric bend onto itself so that you have, it's going to actually bend that way, so that you have a nice kind of binding on the inside of this cut. So thank you for being with, with me here today. And um, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with a video on how to cut this. So thank you. Come back again. Bye.